Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Rutland Town Select Board meeting on this fifth day of January 2021. Happy New Year to everyone. Um, we're going to depart from our printed agenda slightly. Um, we have Senator Josh Terenzini, well, Senator elect until tomorrow, sorry, yes, sir. Uh, to make a presentation. Then we have Andrew Simons from AM Peich, our auditors, uh, to walk us through the audit report. Um, and then we'll go to the ordinary um, approval of orders, the minutes, and then public comment. I apologize. What, for was, that, what, what was that first name you said, Mary? Uh, the, the, the first name? <laughs> that yes. would be Senator-elect um, Josh... Terenzini, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, yeah. Anytime we can clarify, that would be good. Okay, so Josh, you have the floor. Well, Mary, I appreciate it. It's nice to join uh, everybody and uh, Happy New Year. It, listen, uh, opportunities like this come around not that often, and I really I wanted to highlight. Um, one of your colleagues on the board, uh, Sharon Russell, uh, I wanted to just bring it to the board's attention in the town for that matter. Something really neat that the governor has um, issued in her honor, uh, a recognition actually for um, er for a lot of the good that Sharon has done uh, throughout the communities for so long. And, and if you'd allow me, Mary, I'd like to read it just so uh, it's on the record and the, the viewers can, can see, because I thought this was really a nice thing that Governor uh, Scott uh, issued, and I was excited to come on today and share it with you. So, uh, right if you'll ahead. thank you, Mary, I appreciate it. So, it says, State of Vermont Executive Department, a recognition. Whereas uh, Vermonters light the way in many ways, we are known for our commitment to community, our willingness to serve, and for going the extra mile to help those in need. And whereas as our state and nation continue to confront the once in a century pandemic and its many consequences, more than ever, we have uh, relied on each other to help get through these difficult times. And whereas in addition to organize efforts to help our friends, family and neighbors, sometimes it is the little things, those simple random everyday acts of kindness and goodwill that can make all the difference. And whereas Vermonters have stepped up to meet the moment going above and beyond to do their part, showing that we are much stronger when we are united. And whereas to call more attention to the rays of kindness and good deeds happening throughout Vermont and the good people making them happen. I am shining a light on acts of kindness, selfless service and goodwill happening throughout our state. And whereas Sharon Russell has been nominated by a member of their community for this recognition. And whereas Sharon Russell, executive director of the Rutland Open Door Mission has been described as the definition of a servant leader for her work helping those in need. Her nominator has described her as kind, loving, compassionate, hardworking, and dedicated to her community. And this is uh, signed and sealed uh, to Sharon Russell for lighting the way for a of kindness and goodwill during these unprecedented times, uh, dated December the 15th, 2020 by Philip B. Scott, Governor of Vermont. So I thought this was pretty neat to bring forward that uh, the governor uh, agreed um, that uh, Sharon deserves such recognition. So congratulations to Sharon for this uh, deserved honor. Good, thank, thank you, you very much. Congratulations, Sharon. Thank you, thank you, Josh. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just I'm just reading a reading a proclamation. That's all. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well deserved. Um, we'll probably want to make sure that the circle knows about this, so oh. they can highlight it in their next form um, edition. Thank you very much. Come again anytime, Josh. Mary, I will. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Okay, next item, uh, taking this out of order, we'll we'd like to hear from. Uh, Andrew Simons of A.M. Peich, our auditors, and I asked Bill, and he did include in our packet for tonight the various pieces of the audit report. Um, so, Andrew, are you on? I'm on. All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. I uh, hope everyone had a happy holidays. 
Uh, for those who don't, do not know me, I am Andrew Simons with AM Pyshen Company. I am the partner in charge of the external audit for the town of Rutland. Uh, since we have a new board member, I want to remind the board of a couple things. Uh, first, the town operates in a modified cash basis of accounting, which is known as a special purpose framework. For this reason, you'll notice that the financials do not include receivables, payables, long-term debt, or fixed assets. Um, it is modified from true cash basis to include investments for the fiduciary fund. So I just wanna you know, remind everybody about that fact. The other item is that we are independent of the town and therefore we are not part of the town's internal control structure. So I just remind the board and management that they should review policies and procedures periodically to ensure that controls continue to be adequate based on the size and complexity of the town. I know uh, Carrie had distributed, I think the draft reports for the audit. And if you don't have them yet, you'll be getting the final signed copies uh, email. There are a total of four reports uh, the only report that I plan on focusing on tonight is the actual audit report. The other three reports you can review and certainly call me at the office or shoot me an email and I can discuss further with those with you. Uh, so let's dive into the report. Um, the format and wording of the audit report is consistent with the previous audit report, fiscal year 19. This means that there is no new accounting pronouncements were adopted during this fiscal year. Uh, one item that will be upcoming for fiscal year 21, there will be a reporting change to comply with GASB 84. And what this is going to do to next year's audit report, it moves your education property taxes from general fund <clears throat> to a fiduciary fund. It's a reporting change only. It does not change the way the town operates. Uh, the audit report is dated December 30th, 2020. That is the date the report was issued. And the audit covers a period from July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020. So if you're looking at the audit report, which is the largest of the four reports, Page one and two of the report is the independent auditor's report. This is probably the most important piece of the whole entire audit report. So I'm happy to say the town received an unqualified or a clean opinion, which is the same opinion that it received last year. So moving on to page three and four, uh, this is what is known as government-wide financial statements, it combines your governmental funds and it combines your business type uh, activities. I'm gonna skip over these two pages. They don't provide a lot of um, analysis for the town. So I'm not gonna spend any time on those two pages. If you go to page five, so uh, starting on page five is what's known as your fund basis financial statements. This covers your governmental funds, your proprietary funds, and your fiduciary funds. So on page five is your governmental fund balance sheet. It includes your general fund, your depreciation accounts, and the fire station construction fund. So the key parts of the balance sheet here up top is cash. The town has maintained its 1.5 million opening balance, which is good. This allows the town to open its fiscal year each year and not have to borrow money whilst waiting for tax revenue to come in. We have restricted cash of about 2.1 million. This is restricted for various purposes, which is broken out down in your fund balances below. So the key item for your restricted fund balances is your long-term debt repayment, which you'll notice on the bottom shows $287,839. This is important because we have set aside money to pay back the center Ralton fire station bond. And we are starting to, um, 
draw that down to zero. So there's enough left to cover fiscal year 21's payments and fiscal year 2022's payments for the long-term debt. Once we reduce this down to zero, we need to make sure that we include these debt service payments in the property tax calculations each year for budgeting purposes. The next page is your governmental funds income statement. Uh, the first column is your general fund, which you'll see there was a deficit for the year of 46,000. <clears> this is expected because we are not budgeting tax revenue to cover your debt service payments. Again, those are coming out of a restricted fund balance. So we've been expecting deficits for the past few years until we start to raise taxes for these debt service payments. You'll notice that uh, the overall total governmental funds, we do have a surplus of 89,000. So that is a positive thing for the town. On page seven is your <clears throat> budget to actual comparison. I think this is probably one of the most important reports that is in the audit. Um, so a couple key things on here. Your budgeted property taxes towards the top there, the 1.3 million, that's only budgeting for your, your municipal portion of your property taxes. That does not include the education portion. <clears throat> Another key item on here, your local options tax. Uh, the actual amount received was above budget by 47,000. That's good. Yeah. This is a key item to keep an eye on with the pandemic ongoing. Um, this may fluctuate, especially in the current year. So we definitely wanna keep a watchful eye of those deposits that come in for the local options tax. The other key item down below, debt service, you'll see an unfavorable Variance of 141,000. Again, we do not budget for these debt service payments. That's why you see that. These are being drawn down out of the fund balance that is restricted. So over, overall, no real uh, issues that I've noted. Um, but again, I think it's very important for the town to monitor the financials, especially the monthly budget to actual numbers going through as the pandemic continues on. On page eight, real quickly, is your is what's known as your proprietary fund. This is your water and sewer fund. And again, your modified cash basis. So the only things that you show on here is your cash and your unrestricted net position. So really not a lot to go over on that page. On page nine is your proprietary fund income statement. This shows your O&M charges that are collected from town residents and then any disbursements that were paid out from the water and sewer fund for the fiscal year. So we did have a surplus and that is why your cash balance and your net position balance both increased by about $85,000. Page 10 is your proprietary fund uh, cash flow statement. Um, I'm not gonna go into this statement. There's not a lot of value to, um, to dive into that. On page 11, this is what is known as your fiduciary funds. These include three endowment funds, um, accounts, two for the cemetery and one for the fire uh, department. So again, for a modified cash basis, and this is why it's called modified cash basis. So on your fiduciary funds, we are recording the investments that are held out there. And again, these funds are restricted for certain purposes or legal documents that govern how these funds can be used. On page 12 is the income statement related to the fiduciary funds. And there's normally not a lot of activity that flows through these accounts. It's mainly interest dividends, uh, realized gains and losses and lot sales and some minor expenses. So again, for the year, we're showing a deficit. Um, it's a minor deficit. And a lot of that has to do with realized losses that were uh, captured on sold investments. So not a big deal on that one. Page 13 through 26. These are the footnotes that go along with the financial statements. They provide clarification to what we're reporting. 
The only little item that I'm going to point out here that I think is important is the long-term debt schedule on page 20. Again, we're modified cash basis, so we don't represent this liability on the financial statements. It's a footnote only. So as of June 30th, 2020, we still had about 1.3 million in principal balance outstanding. And below is a breakdown of the maturities from 2021 through 2035. So as we continue to draw down that restricted fund balance to zero, we wanna make sure that going forward, starting in 2023 or fiscal year 23, that we start budgeting for that principal and interest payments uh, when we're calculating property taxes. From page 21 through 25, this has to do with the town's retirement plan, the VMERS plan. Um, there's really nothing of significance that I want to point out in here, but again, because you're not modified or because you're not a cruel basis, we do not report um, the unfunded or funded status of the retirement account. But it's all disclosed in a footnote. Then on page 26, there's a subsequent event footnote. There's just a couple sentences covering COVID. Again, we have no idea at this point what the economic impact will be. Uh, the government has injected a significant amount of liquidity into the economy, keeping everything afloat for the time being. So saying that, the town, we want to just remind management and the board to uh, monitor the financials very closely, monitor your budget to actual very closely, and um, just make sure that if any problems arise, that you're addressing it very quickly. Uh, so I want to thank Carrie and Susan for all their help during the audit process. They helped make it go very smoothly. Um, and again, there's three other reports that will be in your packet. I would suggest that you review those um, and then let me know if you have any, snip or any specific questions regarding those documents. Uh, so that's everything that I have that I need to present tonight. Does anybody have any specific questions or concerns they want to address? I had the advantage of meeting um, with Andrew and Carrie uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I've, he's walked me through this. Thank you very much. Um, Aaron, any questions? Not at this time. Okay. Sharon? Nope. JP? I'm all set. Okay, is Joe on? I am. Okay, any questions, Joe? No, no, that was a good explanation, Andrew. Thanks for that. Yeah. Thank you. And it Carrie and Mary have my email and phone number. So if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to, um, to contact. And I will say that um, a couple of years ago when we were dealing with the, the surplus, I did go and sit down with Andrew. And, um, and so they are very accessible at AMPISH. So if anyone wishes to do that, certainly feel free. Okay. Do we need a motion to accept the audit report? Actually, it, we, it would probably be a good idea. So I, I will entertain a motion to do so. So move. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <clears throat> okay, so the um, motion carries and the audit report is adopted. Thank you very much, Andrew. We appreciate your help. Thank you very much. It's good to see everybody. Take care. Take care, you too. Okay. Um, so we'll go back to now our usual order of business. The um, orders are approved and um, we will be approving them individually. I have signed uh, my copies, they'll be here in the town clerk's office. So board members, please do stop in and review the documents and sign them when you are able to. Uh, we have in your packet, the select board minutes for December 22nd. And I will entertain a motion to accept. Those so uh, JP moved, Joe seconded. Any additions, corrections, deletions? 
If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Okay. No one opposed. I will sign. And these will also be here for your signature when you come in to sign the orders. All right. Um, questions or comments from the floor? We've heard from our incoming senator. Um, anyone else who is not on the agenda who would like to be heard? Ed, are you there? We have anyone else who would like to be heard? Okay, we'll move along then. Uh, Bill Sweet, Town Administrative Assistant to the Select Board. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just a few things for you in the packet. Uh, the uh, current meeting schedule uh, is there. Uh, the From the state of Vermont, the equalization results for uh, tax rate uh, are are there for your information. Um, we uh, passed along um, an obituary, a uh, former board member, uh, Dave Seward Sr. recently passed away. His obituary was in the paper uh, and uh, provide that copy for everybody. Um, we have uh, for uh, one of the new business items, the copy of the municipal planning agreement for the uh, regional planning commission. Sure, Barbara will speak more to that in her turn. Uh, and then your audit information, you've already gone over. So that was everything from the packet that I had and everything on my desk. Okay. Um, so let me, if I could, on item number one, the, um, the uh, schedule of uh, committee meetings or the items that they have to pick up. Uh, one of the comments that Andrew had made is that there are certain policies that we might want um, to put into effect concerning handling of funds and that sort of thing. So um, I would ask that that be added to the personnel and finance committee to look into policies for um, town clerk's office. And it's nothing irregular. It's just that it's right. good to have policies in place. So, so there's town clerk office policies? Yeah, um, yeah, there's a little more detailed. Um, let me try and get you better terms for that. But that's... Um, to start. Yeah. Okay. okay got it. All righty. Um, next is, oh, the, I was looking at the equalized grand list um, results, and it looks like where common level of appraisal is, you can't get much closer than that to 100%. So and if, does anyone remember what is it that if we're out of whack by what 25 or 35 percent we have to reappraise but this obviously says we're spot on so no reappraisal in the offing okay and bill is there a card in the town clerk's office to sign uh to dave seward's family we we do have if I, I do have one if i if, if it's not there then we'll we'll get one but i'm pretty sure we do have one okay great thank you very much all right, and no on the desk packet for us, huh? Nope, the, the only thing was the copy of Sharon's award, but she was the only one that didn't get a copy of that ahead of time, right. so. Right. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> did she get hers in the mail? I did. Okay, very good, yeah. All right, thank you, Bill. <laughs> uh, Carrie Clark, town clerk and treasurer, what have you got for us? Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, can you hear me, first of all? Fine. Yeah. From, yes. Okay. Um, I do have several items to talk about tonight. Um, first, I'd like to, um, off, the, off the agenda, to say to Sharon, congratulations. That is quite the honor, and I'm very happy for you. Um, and Thank also... You. Um, to Andrew, I know he left the meeting, but um, the process of my first audit was pretty smooth and I really appreciate um, the knowledge and effort that that company puts in for us. So um, they are right, they are right there in, in, with any questions and always there to um, guide us if we are um, in need of 
some some guidance, I guess. Um, so yes, I wanted to start off saying that. Um, there are a few things that um, I need to talk about. First of all, very, very quickly, um, it is January, so lots of things start happening again for the year, which means the dog registration is back. Um, so if you are owning a dog, um, it is time to start registering your dog from now until April. Um, there's plenty of time to do that, but it begins and began um, on Monday. So that was very quick. Um, I have had some questions again, how to do that. Nothing has changed. We still have a Dropbox. Um, you can still send any payment through the mail with a note and um, same goes for the Dropbox. You can put it right in there with a note. Uh, we'll take care of you as best as we can. Um, moving on from dogs, I just want to remind that the second tax installment is due on the 10th, which falls on a Sunday this year. We will be accepting payments that Monday the 11th until the end of close at 4.30. Um, anything beyond that will accrue some interest. So um, we've already received plenty. Um, we are about halfway there um, already and we still have a week to go. So um, that is just a gentle reminder. It's also posted on Facebook. It's in the Herald. It's um, on our website and also in the circle. So if there are any questions, people can refer to that um, with how to pay. Nothing has changed there either. Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly say is if you are um, a candidate who needs to have your name put on the March local ballot, um, there is a deadline to get your consent form in. Um, I do believe it is the 25th of January. Um, we are not requiring signatures this time because of COVID. Um, the only people that need to worry about a petition or signatures would be anyone that needs an article that's brand new to be put on the ballot. Um, and that deadline is on the 14th of January. Um, so far, I've received a couple consent forms for people um, that are up for re-election. So that's very important um, as we move forward to another election this March. And um, the last thing I wanted to talk about, but not sure if you want to yet, is the depreciation account for the transfer station that was on the agenda for tonight. Uh, you let me know if you want me to talk about that now or wait. Um, do you have a draft for that? I did ask, I will say that I asked our town attorney, um, Kevin Brown, I sent him uh, thanks to Bill's help, copied the um, language that we came up with uh, that was in the minutes of the last meeting. And I sent that to Kevin and I said, you know, can you turn this into a, a proper motion? So I haven't heard back from him. And Bill and I were talking about the timing of this. I think we, we could take it up at our next select board meeting, which is immediately before our public information hearing. Um, okay. Um, so, from but what's the pleasure of, um, I, I don't want to lose it. I'm glad you brought it up because we do want to get it on the ballot. I, um, I just, I wanted to do my homework before we talked about it. And I, and I did talk to um, John Weston from TD Bank a little bit more for my side of it. Um, and I have information regarding that. Um, and I have the examples of how we want it to be worded on the ballot um, based on what we want for the amount of money. Um, so I don't know if that's something you want to get into now or I can draft something up to send along to you guys to see before we talk next time. Okay, I, th I think I would prefer that you just send us what you have. Um, we're, we're a little sensitive because that one time we came up with language on our own for 
That's uh, right. a depreciation fund. We didn't do it right. So um, I, I do kind of want to be careful about this. And that's anyone, exactly. Oh, go yeah. ahead. Does anyone on the select board want to take it up tonight? Okay, so Bill, if you could put this on the agenda for our next meeting, but we absolutely do have to do it then. And I will, um, I'll look for Carrie's information and I will be in touch with Kevin Brown to make sure we have something from him, okay? Perfect, I can send that along to you. I have everything ready. Yes, thank you very much. And right. um, uh, that was as uh, whatever, um, that is the last thing that I had for, for tonight. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Carrie. You're Good welcome. to hear that the tax money is coming in. Doing well. Good. All right. Is Barbara Noyce pulling on the call? Yes, I am. Hi, Barbara. Welcome. Hello. Happy New Year. Uh, congratulations, Sharon. Thank you, Barbara. On your recognition. Yes. Thank um, you. Sure. The, uh, the Planning Commission um, did not meet over the holidays. We do meet Thursday evening. So the only thing I have tonight is that agreement for the municipal planning grant um, and the pocket park. So I don't know if you wanna hop down to that now or revisit it later in the meeting. Well, you're on, so um, why don't we take it up, please? Okay. This is item number four in your packet. Yeah, so this, so the, the grant from the state was $15,000. There's a 10% uh, local match for that. So uh, that's in the, in the general terms and conditions. Um, it started on December 1st of 2020. It goes to May 31st of 22. Um, just want to get the highlights for you here. We'll um, definitely need a signature from at least Mary on this. Um, and on page three is uh, the scope of work that, and I'll be working on this uh, for the Regional Planning Commission and maybe getting some help from the Town Planning Commission. Um, and then page four is a breakdown of the budget. So I'm open to any questions here. So the regional commission is acting kind of as a general contractor and providing some services and you'll contract for what engineering or surveying we also might need. Yeah, that will come out of the $15,000. And, you know, I'm thinking of, um, doing a lot of outreach ahead of time with historians and recreational people, mm -hmm. um, taking um, what we come up with there to public meetings, and then giving a short list, short wish list to uh, a historical consultant and, and an engineering consultant who would be doing, you know, survey and trails and, and, and what's needed for permits and things like that. Okay. All right. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept um, this contract with the Rutland Regional Planning Commission. This is for our pocket park grant. And it looks like uh, if you would be so kind, the motion might include that I am authorized to sign on behalf of the town. So moved. Seconded. Motion is made and seconded. Are there questions or discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Barbara, you sent around a little notice of, of um, mini grants. Would you touch on that for a minute, please? Um, yeah, a little, I can a little bit. It came around today, uh, very small grants, up to $3,000. Uh, transportation is included in there as well as um, recreational possibilities. 
so it's small grants. I even forgotten the name of it. Bill, do you oh. remember the name? Small grants. It's Vermont Natural Resources Council. Yes, thank yeah. you. And anyway, I'm not sure if you have small, any small grants for smart growth. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. So I don't know if you have any ideas. I think the deadline's coming up in February for that one. Okay. Um, Bill, would you please make sure that uh, Lynette Gallopo gets that for the school board because they may be interested in a, you know, yep. who knows what they might come up with, but um, great. So always on the lookout for grant opportunities. I appreciate that very much. Anything else, Barbara? Now I'll be prepared for that, Mary, that you're <laughs> always on the lookout. <laughs> no, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, Mike Rowe, Town Recreation Director. Happy New Year to you all, Sharon, and congratulations, Sharon. Well deserved. So thank you. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Um, just a couple things. I uh, basketball. Hopefully, we'll be doing some skills and drills starting next week if the governor keeps with his. Um, depending on what the governor says on Friday, um, we'll be ready to go for kids and. K to uh, to six to start just basic skills for basketball. So we're hoping that will transpire in the next couple of weeks. The second thing I wanted to thank GE. It was uh, a rush. They were donating sheds. Uh, it was kind of like a. It literally was like a fire sale as far as who would get it first. So that I got informed by GE. Asked if I wanted a, a sixteen by eight shed. And I said, yes. And then about 10 seconds later, I emailed. Oh. Oh, Mike, you're breaking, you're breaking up, Mike. We want to hear the rest of the story, so. We can't hear you. We can see you. <laughs> okay, how about now? Okay. Am I good now? Yep. Yes. We lost All you right. 60 seconds. All right, so we were, I want to thank GE for a shed that they donated. Um, I want to thank Byron and the boys for going and picking up the shed <laughs> and bringing it back. It was literally this, I don't know, it was incredible. It happened so quick. I want to thank everybody involved that made that happen. It'll just be a nice little storage container that we can use at the pool. Um, and I want to thank again, GE for donating that. So that was very nice of them. I saw that. Okay. I yeah, wonder what that was. It was quick. It literally, if you read the article, it was quick. And I, it, it, we had, we got lucky. We got one, um, and we'll figure out a good use for it. Um, but it's sitting in the pool parking lot right now. Yes. So drive by. There's a shed down there. And and again, thank you to Byron for figuring that out and and making that happen uh, to getting it to Northwood Park. Other than that, I don't, um, I don't really have anything. Uh, we're just kind of treading water and waiting to see what happens with uh, our rec sports, and we'll go from there. Okay. Any questions for Mike Rowe? If not, thank you very much, Mike. And thanks for grabbing the shed. No, well, thank Byron. He made it. I wasn't going to be able to hump it down there. That thing's huge. <laughs> thank you, Byron. Speaking of which, Byron Hathaway, Town Road Commissioner. Good evening. How's that? We can hear you. No. Did we lose the we Okay. Go. I got it. Lost my technical edge, I guess, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And good evening and uh, Happy New Year, everyone. And congratulations again uh, to Sharon for something that uh, she has worked on for quite a number of years and is well deserved. Thank you. Bye. Uh, um, I don't really have anything for you this evening, except the, uh, um, let you know that we're just working on winter every time Mother Nature throws something at us. And uh, uh, we've gotten past uh, one of the worst storms of the, of the year, I guess. Hopefully we won't get any more of those in, in uh, late February or March, which can happen. 
Anyways, I would like to discuss a minute with the, with the board. Uh, it was mentioned last year. We talked about it. We put it off for a little bit, and that's the replacement of the uh, small truck that we have. Um, it's going into its sixth winter. Um, there's 73,000 miles now on the truck, and uh, I, don't, I don't know how many hours because there's no hour meter on it, or at least I haven't found one. Um, if we start the process now, um, getting good specifications for board approval, so forth in the process, um, it's probably going to be uh, September or October before you can actually physically see a truck in your yard, and that would be starting now. Um, so I just wondered uh, what the board's feelings were on that, um, if I should drop specifications and get those to you at your next meeting for approval, and then get it out to bid. There is no warranty. I will say there is no warranty left on the truck. It's over five years old now. And so any major repairs that, that uh, may come up as a result of normal wear and tear are going to be out of our pocket and, and, not, uh, and not under warranty. Is it part of our five-year plan? Is it to be replaced at this time? We typically have in the past for the last three trucks um, we've owned uh, that are small trucks. Um, we replace them on a five-year schedule and try to keep them uh, as much as possible under warranty. Okay. Okay. Thoughts from the board? Well, I, I, you know, Byron has always been really good about his equipment and stuff. So uh, I'm going to support what he's asking for because I truly believe he runs a good ship and in my opinion, we need to support that. Okay. So unless I hear any objection, I don't think we need a motion, but we, we um, I'll direct Byron to go ahead and pull together specs for a replacement truck. And then we'll see it and we'll officially vote on it um, to send it out to bid when it um, comes back in, the specs come back in and we can see them. Okay. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions or, or anything? Byron, I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, intersection of Annette Terrace and Post Road, is uh, there supposed to be a stop sign there, or did I always just think there was one? Uh, I thought there was one there, but I'm not positive. You're okay, because... Try try so often. Anyways... Uh, that would be an intersection that would normally fall under, uh, I think the manual uniform traffic control devices re would refer to that as what the, they refer to as normal rules of right of way. Um, okay. If there's not a sign there. All right. Well, there isn't. And I always thought there was, and I was just wondering if somebody thought they needed a stop sign. Um, I frequent that neighborhood quite a lot now. And so I was, uh, just coming out of there this afternoon about 4.30 and I was thinking there's no stop sign on that post. So um, if, if we need one, is that something you can do? And if we don't, then I guess you're kind of on your own there. Uh, what I will do is check the ordinance to see if Annette Terrace is under, is under that, um, in which case there needs to be a sign there. It must have gotten taken. I've got a, another street sign that uh, came up missing somewhere after the big storm. Um, sign post the uh, sign the whole nine yards and uh, you know I didn't get a report from it just something we you know during our normal road checks uh, that discovered that so that's that's getting replaced um, we did put up the welcome to Rotten town sign on the north end on route seven uh, looked to me like a uh, neighbor farmer had hit the post and knocked the sign or loosened it up enough so the wind blew it off or something yeah. but, but anyways it, it's back up and it's secure now and uh, I've got the uh, large arrow signs that uh, came in just the other day for the uh, post road uh, park lane intersection, uh, the controversial intersection there. So that sign will be going up pretty soon. Good. Okay. Very good. Thanks, bye. Okay. All righty. Any other questions from the select board for our road commissioner? If not, thank you very much, Byron. Okay. Have a good evening. Thanks. Chris Clark, town fire chief. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, not much to report. Again, we're on uh, COVID break, so we're not doing any meetings or anything. 
we pro we've only had a handful of fire calls in the last two weeks, nothing major. And last I heard our new truck has still on the agenda to be started to be built. I haven't got a date yet of uh, a start date for building, but I'm uh, keeping track of that and I will let you know when I hear anything. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of our town fire chief? Yes, I have one, Mary. Go ahead. Um, last summer when we were doing some work out behind the school there for Micro, I noticed the uh, two and a half inch gate valve was still on the hydrant and with no cap on it. So I took the liberty of taking that gate valve off. I hung it on top of the uh, hydrant and put the cap on. Um, I don't know if that's the hydrant they've been using or not, but that hydrant and I think Joey will back this up is, is notorious for not draining back very well. So I don't know if the fire department has been checking on that hydrant or not. Yep, we're all set with it. Okay, great, thanks. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, thank you very much, Chief Clark. Uh, Ed Dumas, town police chief. Good evening. Good evening. Sharon, congratulations. Sharon's always been a uh, help to myself when we have a uh, family. Uh, she's always been uh, just any way she could, and I really appreciate her. So thank you. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. And yeah, the other thing is, uh, this last uh, call for service, we had 35 with a two-week period. Uh, I would like to mention, I did give you, I did email the year stats for the town of Rutland for the PD. Uh, you can look at them if you like. But the, we have had an uptick in calls, uh, retail theft, Greenland Plaza. We also had an uptick in complaints coming from the Holiday Inn. Uh, it's kind of concerning to us in that we're dealing with, uh, it's taking quite a bit of time because uh, deputy people, Washburn's on there at least once a day, sometimes, at least once or twice a week, uh, dealing with issues out there because of the uh, house issues that. I just want to give you a heads up to that. I did have an opportunity to go to the uh, new building on 101 US 4 East that uh, Kevin Long told. Uh, uh, it wasn't an issue there. I just went there on a thing. I did not. I did try to see if anyone was there. Uh, they don't have a person on the community that they were going to just put up there. I did have a phone number. I called it. It was. It was just that waiting number. You had to leave a message. It wasn't a critical thing that I was there, but I to interview somebody trying to get in, and there was nobody there. It said and, and it wasn't. And that's about all I have. Do you know if people are now housed there, Ed? They are. Okay. I think they started moving in on the 23rd. I met with a family there last night. Very nice apartments. Uh, Mm -hmm. I have to know the two people there, and I'm glad they have a place to stay. So I just have to thank you. Okay. I gave you quite a hard time. I apologize. That's okay. <laughs> you stated, you, you gave us good information about what the town needed to protect against. So thank you. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll be in touch with Kevin about that. Okay. To make sure that the protocols we had agreed to are there and working. It, it's probably going to take some time when you find that person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any questions of Chief Dumas? Okay. Thank I have you, one more Chief. thing. Yep. Where are we on the uh, Kevin Brown thing as far as the... Uh... Oh. Um, Kevin did send a draft uh, policy to JP and I for review. Um, we, we spoke briefly about it. Um, we probably should circulate it for the full select board uh, for our next meeting, so we can. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Bill, would you please add that? This is the use of force policy. So it's, it's not exactly that. It's like the indemnification for use of force. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. John Paul Fagna, town health officer. Uh, well, hopefully, uh, 
last is not least, but I would like to congratulate Sharon on her recognition for all the work she does for the community. Um, as far as health officer, you know, we're still in for the worst of it. So everybody needs to persevere. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Wise words. Thank you, JP. All right. Committee meeting updates. I don't think we had any because of the holidays. Anybody want to report on a committee meeting I don't know about? Okay. Um, update on project list. We just signed uh, our agreement with to proceed on the park, pocket park grant with the mm -hmm. regional commission. Uh, we were briefed on the railroad lawsuit a couple of meetings ago. The war memorial in, in, at town hall is still on our list. And yeah, I think that's it for now. Okay, um, uh, under new business, the board to meet with the town auditor. We have already done that. Uh, new business item B, the board to discuss wording for the transfer station. We will do that at our next meeting. Uh, the board to review for approval, the planning commission grant. We have done that. Is there any other new business that any board member wishes to discuss? Um, Mary, yes. um, I don't, I don't believe that we have, have, we've done a little discussion about the dedication for the, uh, town report. Have you come up with anyone or have we chosen someone for that? There, no one has been chosen yet. Uh, Sharon actually had a pretty good idea and I have an idea. So, and because we usually try and do it as a surprise, um, okay. probably, you know, get your ideas to me and we'll we'll share the ideas as best we can without violating the open meeting law. Um, yes, we do need to do that because um, that is part of the town report. Bill is working hard. I'm here in the select board room and there's papers spread all over which represents each page of the town report. Um, so it's coming in uh, very nicely. A couple of items, Sharon, you received in your packet information about the Rutland scholarship. So it's- I did. Yeah, we're gonna- yeah. It's time to start talking about putting, um, revising this as needed and getting it out so students can begin to apply. Um, so right. it isn't and right away, but yep, go ahead. Yeah, the, the one thing that I think is important is that um, the people that are supposed to be sending the letters back on these kids. There's a couple of them that the reason we didn't get the kids paperwork is because they didn't, they didn't move to do that. So I think they need to know that it's their responsibility for their school. That's their job that they do reply and get this information back to us. Okay. Good point. Yeah. So to parents and, and graduating seniors, keep an eye out. We post this on our town website when we're ready to start accepting applications for our scholarship. Um, a couple of other things. One is maybe the transfer committee knows, transfer station committee knows this, um, but I was told that um, if Casella picks up our garbage, our compostable garbage, that they have a truck that's supposed to be washing out the bins before they, after they pick it up, before they leave them off. Do you folks know anything about that? I think it's Joe and JP. Uh, not particularly, Mary. Um, you know, I thought they would be following whatever protocols they're supposed to, but um, I haven't heard anything from Larry and specifically. Okay. Mary, I'm right here. Oh, uh, Larry, good. Thank you. Uh, they do have a truck for washing this, but not during the winter time because the water freezes. Oh, for heaven's sake. And that's the tough time for you when you really that's need That's a very help. tough time. But we're keeping up with things, so I'm not worried about it right now. Okay. All right. I know you would raised it with me, and I, I asked Pam Clapp, uh, or she, she raised the issue. So, um, okay. A couple of quick things from me the oh if you haven't seen it i'm a member of the rutland historical society and they have this nifty new pamphlet 
which has all of the historical site markers in our area and a little explanation of them. If you are not a member, I'm plugging the Historical Society now. You can join for only $10 and you too can have your site marker um, pamphlet. It's very nicely done. Um, also, uh, many of you may have received the postcard from Otter Creek Communications District. A couple of months ago, we were asked to consider having the town join and we voted to do so. And one of the, the things they're attempting to do is make sure that any uh, spots in town that have poor coverage are noted and um, opportunities made to increase better internet coverage. And I, I mentioned it because there, there's a little place where you can go on their website and you can check your internet speed um, and find out whether your service is up to snuff. And I did, and I was pretty appalled to find out how slow my internet is. So I recommend this is the Otter Creek Communication District. They have a website, go ahead on it if you have a chance to do that. Uh, one more thing, the circle is out. Our huge thanks to all of the people who contributed um, articles for it. And a special thanks to uh, Carol Bam, who was our editor one more time. Janelle um, Fagnant will be taking over at the next edition, but we had some little, I think, minor software glitches. So Carol did all of the editing and put the um, circle together. Carol Teresa Kulid and Jamie Ashcroft Billings assisted in um, taping and putting mailing labels on and we got the whole thing to the post office. So enjoy your circle and thanks for all of those people who contributed to it. That's all I have. So let's go around the room. Sharon, do you have anything? No, other than thank you everybody, but I am going to shoot Josh. <laughs> <laughs> okay well it's well deserved Sharon I'm delighted you Thanks. bring honor to our town thank you Aaron do you have anything tonight uh I'd just like to take that opportunity to uh um, congratulate Sharon on her acknowledgement from the governor good thank you Aaron okay you can have the next award please <laughs> uh Joe DiNardo any last words or thoughts uh, yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, add to the list of congratulations to Sharon and thank her for what she does down there. And also, Mary and Byron, um, if we could get together at some point to discuss the uh, information that we didn't get from the uh, road project on the south end of town, um, just something that, you know, is bugging me and I'd like to stay on top of that. Okay, so let's set up a highway committee meeting sometime soon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And who have I, uh, Joey. Jamie, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I just said thank you to Joey. Okay. JP, what do you have for us? I'm all set, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, under old business, we have the tabled motion on the guardrail, uh, post road, post road extension. Um, I'll check again to see if Ed Squira has joined us. Okay, well, it doesn't sound like Ed's there. He did want to talk to us about this. So there being no further business to conduct, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Go move. Move. It was a tie that time, but I'll call Sharon ahead. <laughs> and it sounded like <laughs> Joe was second. Sounds good to me. Okay. Yep. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, thank you all and good night.